Hi everyone, welcome back to The Mystic in the Woods. I'm Kate and today we're going to do a quick review of The Divine Feminine Oracle by Megan Watterson. So I just filmed an unboxing of the Shadow of Darkness Oracle cards by Syrian Shadow and I actually ended up talking about the Divine Feminine Oracle a little bit as well. So I thought maybe I should just do a quick review of this deck because I do use this a lot. It was my very first deck ever um, and so I am quite emotionally attached to it. So this is a 44 card deck I believe. Let me double check on that. I don't know how many cards there are in this deck. 53 cards, excuse me. This is a 44 card deck. The Divine Feminine is a 53 card deck. Um, it is published by Hay House. I have no idea what they are printing it on now. This is my original copy. I have no issues with the cardstock and it has held up just fine for me for years. But I don't think Hay House is using this exact cardstock anymore. So I have no, I can't really provide any information on that. The box though, typical Hay House box. Um, actually, let me go grab the guidebook because it is sitting over by my bed. So the Divine Feminine Oracle, like it sounds, is a deck about the Divine Feminine. So one of the things that I do think is really solid about this deck is the guidebook. Now I have heard some people complain about it. Um, like if you are an or like if you are a card reader, the deck is that the book may not be set up for card readers or divination or things like that. But I love the guidebook, and I think it's a really solid introduction to. Um, all the different divine feminine beings that are in this deck, which is 53 of them. So in the deck you get, or in the guidebook, here's Lilith, you get the card representation, you get the information that is on the card, which is like a title and a key phrase, and then you have a couple pages, like, like a page and a half to two pages of who she is, so that you know her, who, who the, what her original myth is. Now, of course, you, know, you really can't put everything there is to know about Lilith in two pages, but it's a really good introduction to Lilith. Um, and then on the next page, you're gonna get when your soul selects her card. So this is like the message. You also get the soul voice meditation and then the intention, um, which is the same as the phrase that is on the card. So the guidebook is actually a really solid introduction to a variety of different divine feminine beings, goddesses, human women. Um, the guidebook or the deck box even says, um, Megan Water Watterson has gathered together the saints, mystics, gurus, and goddesses from the world religions who represent both divine beings and the human women who sought to embody them. So it is, um, it is quite balanced in that regard that there are there are figures from very a variety of uh, pantheons and traditions. The the backing is beautiful. I love the backing. Um, there are complaints about the imagery. Now I do understand that when you look at this deck underneath a bright light, the imagery is very flat in my opinion. I didn't understand that complaint until I looked at it under bright light. But under a darker light, the imagery really does glow, in my opinion. Like, it glows. The deck is fairly balanced in ethnicities and skin colors. There are a couple of older figures. I do think we could have had better um, age representation here. And I will say that I do feel like it's a little bit whitewashed. So, for example, like, here are just a handful of cards that are, are clearly not supposed to be white women because we know that about their the traditions that they come from and they still feel to me fairly whitewashed and i think that i think i don't know i think that was an attempt to make it look like they had just lots of light shining on them um but you know but there is, you know, but then like here we have, I can never pronounce this, this name. So this is like the goddess, this is an ocean goddess. And I'm sorry that I can never pronounce her name. So I won't even try. So there is a fair amount of diversity though. And we do see lots of different traditions represented. Now the deck has the name. So you have, so here's Pope Joan. You have like a little title for her. So the Pontiff of Possibilities. And then you have like the affirmation, the possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. So they all have that type of a um, layout. So here's Joan of Arc, the warrior of light. 
I have a steel like faith in my in myself the angels of the angels armor me with conviction um this deck is very much about divine love and about feeling the love within it's a very supportive deck um a lot of people will call it like a hug deck although i will say that i can get a lot a lot of information out of this deck when i use it in a reading so i will use it for daily draws i will use it for a sort of cap to a reading i will use it when i need to feel supported I will also use it to get more information in a reading and to bring more depth into a reading. Um, so I will pair it with a tarot deck and I, I would give you guys pairings I like, but honestly I just pair this with everything because I like the deck so much. I don't use it all the time in every reading, but I, I will use it with any deck. Um, I can actually get a lot of information off of the keywords and information that are on these cards, in co especially in combination with what I know about the goddess or the being's myth or the woman's myth and story. Um, so I can actually get a lot, a lot of information to bring into a reading. Now, I, of course, am a little bit biased in that I love this deck. It was my very first deck. I read Megan Watterson's um, book. Mary Magdalene, this book, Mary Magdalene Revealed, um, and it literally changed my life. It literally changed the trajectory of my life. It put words to, it put words to things I had always felt, but never could express. And it, I would not be doing what I do now without this book. Um, and so I absolutely love this book. And it is definitely, um, what I love about this book, what I want to say is that what I love about this book is that it, um, it is like one third history, one third Megan Watterson's theology, and also like one third memoir. So you get like a story and she walks you through the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. She also talks about like the Acts of Paul and Thecla. She talks about the history of the church and what it did to the story of Mary Magdalene and how it came to the conclusions it came to. Um, so the book literally changed my life. And I had seen, because once I was in like, you know, had Megan Watterson on my radar, this deck popped up somewhere on the internet for me as well. And so I ordered it because I really loved the imagery at the time from what I was seeing online, the photos I was seeing online. And I had an absolutely flooring first experience with this deck. Um, it was so spot on. It was so direct and it told me exactly what I needed to hear multiple times within a week. It would send out the same card. I, I pulled cards for a couple of family members the first week that I had this. And it was just absolutely shocking the relevance that this deck can bring to a situation. So while it is definitely a, you know, white light deck or a divine light deck and it's full of love and it's full of affirmations, it is very, in my opinion, or at least for me, extremely accurate in bringing advice to situations. Now, I will also use this deck because it does have, she has a soul voice meditation in each card. So this one says, um, what do I need to bring out of the depths into the material world? So it also gives you this ability to journal, to use it as a meditation prompt. I will often pull a card from here and then ask a tarot deck the question from the guidebook and then pull my whole message together about what I need to know that day. Um, I talk about that a little bit in my um, how to get more out of your daily draw video where I talked about various ways you can do a daily draw and that is one of them. So I really love this deck, although I do understand the complaints with it. Art, of course, is exceptionally subjective. I do have, I just purchased um, her new deck, the, the, uh, my, Mary Magdalene Oracle one. The the Mary Magdalene Oracle, that's what it's called. I have hardly used it. Um, and so I will eventually do, I will probably eventually do a review on this because I really love Mary Magdalene and her story and her myths and just the whole thing. 
Um, but I haven't used this deck a lot because I there's something that's not quite clicking for me the way that the Divine Feminine Oracle does. And of course I don't want any, I don't want an, any artist or any creator or any author to just give me the same deck over and over. So this one's making me work for it a little bit more and I will get back to you guys about that. So <laughs> if there is anything in this video you would like to hear more about, just let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.